Hello class, this is section 7.2, the Zhou Dynasty and New Ideas. Um, it would be assignment 49 in your notebook, and I believe we're doing this on Friday, March 14th. All right, so um, the first section is on the Zhou Dynasty, and um, in the previous section, the last dynasty in place was the Shang. Uh, eventually, the Zhou dynasty took over from the Shang, and the Zhou dynasty was the longest-running Chinese dynasty as far as we know. Looking here, this image, um, the Zhou emperors, the rulers, they believed in what is called the Mandate of Heaven, which is they believed that kings had heaven's permission to rule. And that's how they defended their right to the throne. Um, if people tried to argue against them, well, they said, oh, I have the mandate of heaven, uh, heaven's permission. And um, Joe rulers expanded the kingdom. They, uh, and they had a certain structure uh, in, in place in how they ruled. So you had the king at the top who led the government, and he gave and granted land to the lords, the nobles. Uh, who ruled over different areas of China. Um, from there, all right, lords paid taxes to the king and provided warriors to protect his lands. And um, peasants farmed the noble's land, small plots of land for their noble. Uh, and what ended up happening over time, and this is where this picture here comes in, maybe you recognize it from The Lion King, the Disney movie The Lion King, Here's Mufasa, Simba, Mufasa is Simba's dad. They're on this cliff face, this edge of the, the edge of the cliff, and Mufasa is telling his son, "Oh, this is all the land that will go to you when I die." Well, it, it was similar with lords. Lords passed land down to their sons, and you think that'd be good, but over time, you know, each son got less and less land, and um, eventually the political order broke down, and the sons didn't respect the king. They didn't respect the emperor, okay? Um, and so these sons, these new lords, they didn't want to fight for the king during invasions. They didn't want to support him. And what ended up happening was what is called the Warring States period. Um, the Warring States period. So during the Warring States period, it was a civil war between lords, uh, different, different lords, different families. And also... Um, what happened during this time is powerful families lost power and families fell apart. Things like sons fighting against each other, sons killing their fathers to take over land. Terrible things uh, that broke apart families, which is what this, this image is representing, during the Warring States period, uh, which you can see here some of the uh, different, um, I guess, uh, Warring States, some of the states that were fighting against each other. But yeah, so at this time period, during this time period, you know, the family was was falling apart in general, and uh, morals were, were were down. So that then came along. So during this period of disorder in the Zhou Dynasty, a man named Confucius came along, and he encouraged ethics, also known as moral values. And this was needed during this time, as I just mentioned. The families, the family structure was was torn apart. So he came in, and he had all these. Uh, thoughts and beliefs uh, on how the people of China should live. And we did the activity on Tuesday and Wednesday this week um, uh, with the quotes from Confucianism. So I'm just going to mention some of the ideas here uh, that Confucius preached. He believed that fathers should set a good example for their family. He believed that children, and this is this picture over here to the right, Children should obey their parents and do as they were told. Family should always be loyal to each other. He believed that moral leadership, meaning behaving the right ways and setting a good example, were more important than the laws in place. He believed that the king should lead by example, kind of like the father should lead by example, the king should lead by example. And he believed that the lower classes should learn from their superiors. So higher classes should also set a good example for the lower classes. Uh, Confucianism focuses on morality, 
family, society, and government. And it's more than a philosophy, really. It's, it's, it's not a religion, per se, but it's close to a religion in that it told people the right ways to live. And you can see in this image here, with all these words, a lot of the ideas that would have gone with Confucianism. Um, this picture th to the right middle is kind of silly. You've got Confucius with, a, with an iPhone. I think this is from a, from a news article about how Confucianism is uh, still a part of China today and how it's influenced uh, the culture there. All right, so the next uh, section is on Taoism and legalism. Uh, which are two different uh, belief systems. So Taoism stresses living in harmony with the Tao. And the Tao is the guiding force of all reality. Uh, this symbol here, the yin and yang, that's a symbol of Taoism. Um, they believed Taoists, uh, so they believed just kind of going with the flow. That's kind of the thing, going with the flow. So they believed that the government should stay out of people's lives, their idea of the perfect ideal ruler, they governed so effortlessly that people didn't even know they were there. They didn't realize they were there. Uh, things were going so well, they, you know, and people just didn't realize that person was ruling because they were just doing it so effortlessly. Taoists paid more attention to the natural world. Um, they believed humans are a part of it. It's, you know, no, humans are not better than it. We're just a part of it. So, that's why there's this picture of this lake and this mountain, because Dallas, Dallas were, or are, all about uh, nature. Um, and the most famous Dallas teacher is Lao Tzu, uh, who is in the bottom left here, L-A-O-Z-I. And finally, we have legalists and legalism. Legalism is the belief that people are bad by nature and need to be controlled. People are bad by nature and need to be controlled. So... You can guess why I put this picture of Hitler, right? Arguably the most evil person that we know of in history who killed millions and millions of people. Um, so legalists only dealt with government and social control. They believe that the government should control people um, as much as possible because their people are bad and they need to be controlled. They disagreed with the moral teachings of Confucius and they also disagreed with the lack of authority that Taoists preached. Taoists were all about going with the flow. No, legalists, not everything needs to be controlled for, for a legalist. Legalists believed in strict laws. Uh, if you broke a law, you know, it wasn't always just you being punished. They believed that your family should often be punished as well to, to set an example. Because, you know, if if there's the threat of not only you being punished, but also your family, you're probably, you're probably a lot less likely to... to risk doing really bad things. So they had very extreme punishments, which is why I have this picture of an old electric chair, which is something used with the death penalty. And legalists wanted officials to run China with strict laws. Um, it wasn't, you know, about like Taoists believing a, a ruler just ruled so effortlessly and behind the scenes. No, legalists believe that the officials should really take control and you'd see them. So yeah, and that's the final section. So um, the big idea, I didn't mention the, the main ideas, but you know they're sprinkled throughout here. The big idea of this uh, lesson is that the Zhou dynasty brought political stability and new ways to deal with political and social problems in ancient China.